to increase sales of electric vehicles and pretty much every personal gadget today coming with some form of high performance rechargeable battery inside it, global demand for lithium ion cells is massive and it's only expected to get larger. This year, the lithium ion battery market is worth an estimated 44.2 billion US dollars. In just five years time, that is predicted to more than double to 94.4 billion US dollars. So it's no surprise that automakers around the world are scrambling to try and secure themselves a long lasting, reliable source for either pre-made lithium ion batteries or the actual raw materials that go into making them. Some companies like Tesla are actually doing both, buying both raw materials to make its own cells in house and simultaneously buying in cells for use in some of its products. In addition to trying to source as many new battery cells and raw materials as they can though, there's also mounting pressure on automakers to ensure that whatever they're buying is ethically sourced. That's partly because cobalt, as well as some of the other metals used in the production of lithium ion cells and electric car motors, can often be traced back to so-called artisan mines in places like the Democratic Republic of the Congo, a nation which is far from democratic and where unscrupulous mine owners often use child or slave labor to extract the required metals from the ground. And that violates numerous human rights laws around the world. While cobalt is used in other things too, it's actually used to remove sulfur from oil during the petroleum refining process, it still doesn't make the way in which much of the world's cobalt supply is currently mined okay. And thus, automakers are doing many different things to try and distance themselves from the aforementioned human rights violations. One solution, of course, is to go completely cobalt free. That's something that Tesla and several other automakers are pursuing. In fact, Tesla now uses cobalt free battery chemistries for its Chinese market Tesla Model 3s. And other automakers are falling over themselves to develop and invest in cobalt free battery technology, be it solid state, lithium iron or a mixture of the two. Another solution is to ensure that the materials purchased are ethically sourced. But as a video we did earlier this year on the subject shows, that's not always easy. As Kate Walton Elliott explained in that video, blockchain technology can be a savior in that regard, as it helps ensure that there's a continuous history of where each kilo of cobalt comes from the moment it leaves the ground. BMW has in the past been an avid supporter of blockchain technology and to my knowledge, still uses it to trace where the cobalt it uses comes from. Today though, it went one step further, announcing a new way of tackling the issues of ethical sourcing of raw materials by cutting out the middleman. Since we've gone through the chain of cobalt sourcing before in the blockchain video, don't worry, there is a link below. I won't go in depth here, but as is often the case with any kind of raw materials, they go through a series of middlemen between mine and refinement and then sometimes again between refinement and actual cell production. BMW's solution is to sign contracts with a Moroccan cobalt mining company in Marrakesh worth 100 million euro. The contract will see it purchase 100 million euro worth of cobalt directly from the mines owned by the Manjum Group and then ship it directly to its two battery cell production partners, namely Chinese firm Cattle and South Korean firm Samsung SDI. The resulting battery cells will be used in BMW's range of existing and upcoming electrified vehicles, hybrid, fully electric, plug-in hybrid, and hydrogen fuel cell. This, says BMW, means that it will have a 100% transparency as well as traceability from mine to finished cell without any concerns that the materials it's using are connected with human rights violations like child and slave labor. It is essentially removing itself from all cobalt mined in the DRC. I should note here that the majority of the world's cobalt does come from the DRC and both the battery cell industry and the automotive industry, which yes, in this case, I'm including petroleum refinement, needs to work harder to clean up their own respective supply chains. And frankly, we should be making a whole lot more noise about BMW's move to diversify its sources of cobalt in this way. It might not be leading the electric vehicle world in terms of vehicles sold or indeed in terms of plug-in vehicle choice, but it is most certainly at the forefront of the drive towards ethical mining.
Compared to the DRC, however, Morocco's total cobalt output is absolutely tiny. Today's new contract, which is good from 2020 through until 2025, accounts for about one-fifth of the total cobalt that BMW thinks it's going to need for its plug-in and electrified vehicles for the next five years. The rest of that cobalt is being sourced from mining companies in Australia, which again, do not have to worry about human rights violations at its mines. There is still the matter of environmental concerns with any mined material, and BMW says it's always working hard to ensure its actual mining operations are environmentally responsible. In a similar vein, it's committed to eliminating all rare earth metals in its electric motors from next year, and has already switched its battery production facilities over to 100% renewable energy operation. Why is that particularly important? Well, it's down to total carbon footprint. Unlike your internal combustion engine vehicles, whose carbon footprint is spread out across its production, time on the road, and ultimate disposal or recycling, the majority of the carbon emissions associated with battery electric vehicles actually occur during the vehicle's production. That, of course, includes producing the actual battery pack. By shifting all of the production processes for an EV to ones that are powered by renewable electricity, it significantly helps reduce that car's overall carbon footprint. As, of course, does keeping your electric car for as long as you possibly can. I know some of you do like replacing your car pretty frequently. I have in the past. But with battery lifespans increasing, there really is no excuse now for not owning a brand new electric car for 10 years or more. So there you have it, BMW's new approach to dealing with human rights violations and concerns over ethical cobalt sourcing. Frankly, it's smart, proactive, and I think this is the most important plug-in vehicle story I've seen all week. Yes, new cars and new features are cool, but this move makes sure that your new electric car doesn't come at the cost of someone else. And to those who invariably note in the comments section that not supporting DRC mines means families go without because their children don't work, as global citizens, it's everyone's job to ensure that we do absolutely everything we can to make sure that every child, every family around the world has access to decent healthcare, decent education, decent food, and a decent future. In a world where nationalism is becoming increasingly popular and globalism is looked on by some world leaders as a dirty word, I'm afraid that's going to take longer than it really should. That's it for today's video. I'm glad you stopped by. If you'd like to help us make more videos like this one, please do like, comment and subscribe. And you can support us using any of the links below, which now include Ko-fi, Patreon and Bitcoin. Don't forget too that you can chat with the team on Discord for free. There's a link below. And if you're a Patreon supporter, in addition to those free chats, you'll also get access to our special Discord chats for Patreon supporters. Thanks to the folks scrolling by on my right. They are our charged up patrons. Thanks also go to Jeffrey Songs, to John Lyons and Regine Fellows. They are our self-driving patrons. And special thanks to our Starman level patrons, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerback and Sean Udaya. I know that the set is not quite right yet. Thanks to everybody who's given us feedback on it. We're getting some new lights next week, which should fix some of the problems. If you're looking for something else to watch on the channel, Google thinks you might enjoy this one. So check it out if you haven't. And I'll be back soon with more content for you all to enjoy. Until next time, wash your hands, stay safe and work to become a better kind of person. Strive for equality and treat others as you'd like to be treated. And please wear a mask if you're out and about. Thanks for joining me. And until next time, keep evolving.